as an architect of £32 million projects and a design technology teacher of electronics, engineering, graphics, designed to the scale of an average ADHD child's attention span. My 3,000 square foot, 280 metres squared, to those of us in the 21st century, will keep me occupied and not out of trouble. My trade and craft skills have been hugely useful in getting me through seven years of university. I'm an architect, uh, technical based, as well as front end design work, um, but really specialise in the maitre de oeuvre end of things rather than the pretty concept pictures. Vagabond is the lifestyle of the Belle Epoque era, the foundation of Aix-les-Bains. Laisse tomber les filles, laisse tomber les filles, un jour c'est toi qui pleurera. Need an escape from off-grid living, while a vagabond has constant reminders of society's norms. You don't want to tire of the vagabond lifestyle and you do need to ingratiate yourself. Socialising is a pleasure and needn't be craved, even if it's sometimes rarely missed. aix -Bain and many others are escapism for me. Get into a social headspace as an off-grid vagabond. grid. But off-grid is just a word. What, or where rather, is the reality? If you're off-grid or in solar rich New Mexico dry, you're constantly attired for clickbait, communal living on the fringes of the mobile home parks and their hookups. Water's the worry perhaps. Do you crave Costa Rica? Drivers, professional drivers, go tramping, sleeping in the cab for months on end, even doing seasonal work, following the seasons migrating. Off-grid is inevitably a vagabond lifestyle without travelling, and sensibly ameliorated to a greater or less extent. It's a freedom like mortgage-free, but open to ridicule.
most it's done with a luxury of living off past establishment respectability. What do I mean by that? A bank account needs a registered address, not a field hedgerow box. Seasonal temporary accommodation can help with that, but it's not usually accepted. Healthcare requires taxation. If you're not taxed for something, you're going to find it difficult to access the healthcare system. You're young and fit, you say, but taxation requires recognition and acceptance into the norms of society. I'm sorry, we don't accept applications from 18th century lifestyles. Car and insurance requires all these things and a roller coaster of superstition, control technique, fingers crossed. Costs, cash, requires work. Finding work. Internet at cafes is costly. In libraries, it's so time consuming it inevitably ends up raising concerns about you and your lifestyle. The vagabond doesn't need to be stinking out in the library for them to have concerns and pass them on to the police. <laughs> Water, washing and sanitation. This is the biggest one really, I think. No deleterious matter to be released off-site. That's what I find is an interesting phrase. Sanitation, you flush it as easily as you flick a light switch. How inventive you are and how much money and effort you put into adapting the resources that come to you. They'll come to you. For the bare necessities. Are they efforts best applied to making steps towards the norm? Rainwater collection is bulky, however you look at it. Near me, every village has a fountain. You can get your drinking water from the fountain. You can buy drinking water so easily. River water collection is strenuous if there's no rain. You're designating space. No, designated. Mes disques sont un miroir dans lequel chacun peut me voir. Je suis partout à la fois, brisé en mille éclats de voix. It's space. Composting toilet isn't really smelly, any more than a any toilet is for a little while. In a designated space, smell isn't the problem. And your scat reduces much more than those food shopping bags that you carried to contribute towards making it in the first place. Sawdust is bulky to store. No one reads newspapers anymore. I'm assuming we're all going to use shop-bought toilet paper at this moment. Ashes from a fire absorb poisons. Everything I read tells me that you're supposed to separate the wee. That's the tricky Vagabond is the lifestyle of the Belle Epoque era, the foundation of aix le -Bain. Bit. Does it matter? Through limited research, it does seem to speed up the decomposition. But our we is supposedly fertile. Eliza, but the dilution levels for irrigation are just to trace elements. You can store it in plastic bottles, discharge straight into the plastic bottle. But what to do with the wee? Urine. Ammonia is an acid, is it? It smells, and when it's hot, it really smells. Not in the plastic bottles, however you dispose of it. Most sensibly, but illegally, you would pour it down a public drain after lifting a manhole. 
it's in a bottle, you might be tempted to just uh, put it in the recycling or put it in a public litter bin or onto a remote brownfield site into the river. It's a small amount, it's only me, my we. This is something. <laughs> that children at school could really become social outcast uh, stigma with, isn't it, really? But a composting toilet produces earth. You can grow vegetables in it. They taste very nice, but it does somewhat rule out dinner parties. If you sell it at a market stall, does, um, does it... Do you tell the customers? It's provenance. Customers like to know the provenance of them. Foodstuffs these days. The potager is time consuming. Um, I'll say it's a hobby, but I know that it does pay for holidays doing a tour of a region's market. A neighbouring region as well. Somewhere in the south of France, following the markets of Provence with your produce. Should I get evangelical about it? Straight the customers about how I use the no turn technique and um, like to rescue worms when I see them. Eco autism, off grid escapism. escapism. Exlema and many others are escapism for me. Get into a social headspace. There's an off-grid Vagabond. I have an acceptance of a kind of loneliness set apart from convention. Outside of exploitative financial system and have learned to live with a constant six degrees C inside when it's minus ten outside. Mainly down to an inadequate electric supply. A realistic. A budgeting of of gas. Solar panels are the cheap bit. If you've got enough of them now in cloudy conditions even you can have good electricity for the evening. It's the batteries, the lithium batteries that are the expensive bit. The system you need for off-grid. The solar and the batteries are like paying for half a lifetime's worth of electricity all at once. You don't have to worry about it too much after that but you do have to
but you do have to buy a triple plus white goods fridge freezer washing machine you have to buy the best incrementally and in between times be satisfied with camping quality low power items which they must have in America really they're only 110 volt not 240 are they but here I'm talking about DC rather than AC you spread your energy versatility you go and buy camping gas bottles which is what everyone does in this area actually you don't get town gas in the Alps gas is a backup to your electricity generally off-grid need overrides want these escape Pisms like aix les -Bains are a little luxury, a little sanity, really. How off grid are you? Do you buy? You buy tinned goods to avoid the trek into the supermarket on a daily basis for fresh. Foraging knowledge would be an advantage, but even then it's limiting. You're not going to hunt for your food. That's some insanity even beyond me. work do you take it on when it goes begging when the economy decides for you should you let the economy the ebbs and flows of the economy decide when you work for funds or when you play with your own project uh yeah scrounging for materials someone else's waste materials for you to reuse does often cost teasing is often respected always accommodated quite often thanking you for doing them a favor but it might cost ending jobs prematurely possibly questioning occurring does need ever override want the off-grid vagabond is 